Bradman area 45 is part of the frontal cortex in the human brain, situated on the lateral surface, inferior to BA9 and adjacent to BA46. This area is also known as pars triangularis. In the human, it occupies the triangular part of inferior frontal gyrus, and, surrounding the anterior horizontal limb of lateral sulcus, a portion of the orbital part of inferior frontal gyrus, bounded caudally by the anterior ascending limb of lateral sulcus, it borders on the insula in the depth of the lateral sulcus. In terms of satorchitecture, texture, it is bounded caudally by the opercular area 44, rostra dorsally by the middle frontal area 46, and ventrally by the orbital area 47. Together with BA44, it comprises Broca's area, a region that is active in semantic tasks, such as semantic decision tasks and generation tasks. The precise role of BA45 in semantic tasks remains controversial. For some researchers, its role would be to subserve semantic retrieval or semantic working memory processes. Under this view, BA44 and BA45 would together guide recovery of semantic information and evaluate the recovered information with regard to the criterion appropriate to a given context. A slightly modified account of this view is that activation of BA45 is needed only under controlled semantic retrieval, when strong stimulus-stimulus associations are absent. For other researchers, BA45's role is not restricted to semantics per se, but to all activities that require task-relevant representations from among competing representations. Lesions of the BA45 lead to the characteristic findings of expressive aphasia in individuals who are left hemispheric dominant. A strong correlation has been found between speech-language and the anatomically asymmetric pars triangularis. Founders, et al., showed that language function can be localized to one region of the brain as Paul Broca had done before them, but they also supported the idea that one side of the brain is more involved with language than the other. The human brain has two hemispheres, and each one looks similar to the other, that is, it looks like one hemisphere is a mirror image of the other. This is not actually the way it works. Founders, et al., found that the part of Broca's area we call pars triangularis is actually bigger than the same region in the right side of the brain. Interestingly, this leftward asymmetry corresponded both in form and function. This means that the part of the brain that is active during language processing is bigger. In almost all the test subjects, this was the left side. In fact, the only subject tested that had right hemispheric language dominance was found to have a rightward asymmetry of the pars triangularis. Certain other researchers, however, have found no volumetric asymmetries in the pars triangularis. They have challenged previous findings that pars triangularis asymmetry exists, and have suggested that inconsistencies in previous findings may be due to great variability in inter-individual pars triangularis morphology. That is, these regions tend to vary in size and shape much more than other areas of the brain, such as deep cortical nuclei. Furthermore, while these research have found statistically significant asymmetries in the pars opercularis and the planum temporale, they found no correlations between asymmetries of these brain regions with that of the pars triangularis. At least one study demonstrated a high degree of connectivity between the three subregions of the inferior frontal gyrus. By stimulating one region of the IFG and measuring the response in distinct regions, these researchers were able to demonstrate the existence of numerous pathways between the pars triangularis and pars opercularis. Also, stimulation of one region of the pars triangularis elicited a response in distinct regions of the pars triangularis, illustrating the presence of networks within the subgyral region. Additionally, the pars triangularis was implicated in semantic processing of language. By measuring the response of the brain by electroencephalography as it responded to different sentence types, Myers et al. 
demonstrated a time lag in the comprehension of erroneous sentences. To understand this one would only need to imagine a person being told something they did not understand. They would pause and take a moment to process the information. Furthermore, these researchers demonstrated a characteristic processing pattern called an N400, which refers to a negativity that appears in the pars triangularis about 400 milliseconds after the syntactic mismatch is presented. However, the pars triangularis is likely to be only part of the network generating the N400 response in EG since the magnetic counterpart N400M measured using MEG has been consistently localized to the superior temporal cortex.